Okay, I'm back with the Maplin. Today I'm going to focus on uh, the oscillators, uh, the ins and outs of them, uh, a little bit how to, about uh, how to uh, calibrate them, and some other oddities with them. Uh, and I've also included a few patches as, as usual. So hopefully you can get something out of it. Okay, very welcome. Okay, this uh, first sound uh, may not sound too uh, unusual. Uh, the thing I've uh, done to this is a little trick that I figured out. Since the filters on the Maplin uh, don't have built-in key follow, key follow of course is that the filter opens up along the keyboard. Uh, then you need to uh, figure that out externally, usually through the mixers here and stuff like that. But I realized that one nifty way of doing it is actually hooking up the filters to key modulate. Uh, the filters go in there. And apart from uh, the, the keyboard signal itself, I also add modulation 100% from the patch. And I add the transient A. That way I can affect the filter both with the uh, uh, key follow and I can affect it with a transient or some other modulation source. So you can hear how it opens up further up the keyboard but at the same time I have the motion of the transient. So just a little trick. Uh, otherwise the sound is nothing particular. It's a one oscillator in each channel. Uh, goes through the filters, goes through my stereo envelope control and then out. Maybe you see here also I have um, a black box, a 1010 music black box. And what I've started doing is doing sampling of the Maplin, so I'll be able to play the Maplin sounds polyphonically uh, through the black box. And maybe I'll share a few of those sounds as well. Okay, sound number one. Okay, the Maplin oscillators. So you can see there are four of them. Uh, mostly they're kind of usual, but they have a few unusual details. Uh, if we start from the range knob here, you see that um, what's a bit unusual is that these oscillators also work as uh, LFOs, uh, low frequency oscillators. So you can use these to manipulate other things. There is a little bit of a difference between oscillator one and the other three. And that is that they have this sync button. I wasn't very aware of what the sync button did until just a few years ago. Uh, but um, I have a sound that uh, I can play. That's where the one oscillator forces the cycle upon another oscillator and you get some interesting sounds in the in between there. So uh, you should really modulate one of the oscillators to make them fight each other a little bit. Otherwise, of course, we have the regular signs you can see on the oscilloscope also. Sign, of course, a soft uh, waveform. We have the triangle. I'll open the fil filters a little more as you can hear. And of course, the most popular waveform would be the sawtooth. On the oscilloscope here, you see the, the raw waveform here in the blue. 
and then you see the, the waveform after the filter. And as you can see, these filters, they invert the, the waveform. And then you have the inverted sawtooth. Uh, by itself it sounds the same, but if you mix them, if you mix two uh, sawtooths, one, in, one inverted, then, then the, the sum becomes more of a square wave. I can do it here if you want. Uh, there you can see I get a, a, a wave tooth here instead when I mix the two. <laughs> Anyway, then I have the square wave, of course, and this is called shape, uh, but um, most of the time it's called pulse width modulation. Uh, on the patch board it's called mark and space. That's an expression that hasn't really survived. Uh, but mark space is actually the pulse width mod modulation. And here you can hook up, say, a, a sine uh, oscillator, an LFO, and then I turn on the... There we can see it, that it starts to vary. <laughs> Maplin has uh, two uh, sources for the mark and space, but on my particular Maplin, I, I had to steal one of the inputs because uh, I needed needed it for an uh, external CV output instead. But it's still there. I can uh, rehook, uh, reconnect it if I want to. Next, we have something that's kind of unusual. We have this free run knob. That way, you can run the oscillator without having a control signal coming in. So I can... And that's also use useful when you use it as an LFO, because uh, then you can of course set your own uh, frequency here. I'm going to turn off that thing there. Another thing that's interesting with the design of this oscillator is that four out of these five waveforms are all active at once. I saw somebody who had put these uh, eighth inch uh, uh, sockets here so you could get each uh, frequency, uh, I mean uh, each waveform out uh, separately. I, I've been thinking about doing something similar, but probably not on the front panel here, but maybe I'll run them uh, to a, a separate little patch panel so I can... because that, that opens up quite a lot of waveform possibilities if you can mix them. I mean you can't get them to beat against each other frequency-wise, but you can make some interesting waveforms if you can mix all these. Uh, the ones that can't be at the same time is the sawtooth and the inverted sawtooth. But you can have one of those, and you can have all, uh, all three of the others. Then finally, the tuning knob. No big deal. Uh, but of course, it's important to tune the oscillator. Another thing, if we continue the signal, signal path here into the mixers, uh, the Maplin is very sensitive to running, uh, running the mixer too hot. So if I add another oscillator here and start going red, uh, then it'll, it'll distort and it may also choke the power supply. So try and keep it... I mean, you can use this LED to... Uh, when you're tuning the oscillators, you can see when they're beating together. Uh, but when you're running it, you should lower the main vo volume here. So so it doesn't distort too badly. 
Okay, that was the exterior. Now I'm going to show a little uh, on the inside. So now you see my somewhat messy inside of my synth here. The thing I want to advise you guys to do, if you have a chance, is to replace these trimmers. You see the standard trimmers are, are just these one turn low precision trimmers. But I found it close to impossible to uh, get where I was going with, with these little trimmers. So instead I, I replaced them with these multi-turn precision trimmers. And now it's so much easier to uh, get where I'm going. And as you can see I've, I've marked all the trimmers as well so I, I can find them easily which one is which. So that's really important. Uh, so these are the octave trimmers. And then there's one more trimmer that I've replaced for a precision trimmer and it's this one called RV9. Uh, I call it a scale uh, trimmer. Uh, when you set it up it tells you to uh, adjust this so that the oscillator is just running or whatever it says. But I found that this is the equivalent of uh, a scale trimmer. Uh, so when, when you've set uh, when you set how the frequencies go along the uh, keyboard, then you often uh, need to, especially since I told you in, in the other uh, video, that when you add these control voltages on top of each other, uh, the errors of those voltages tend to uh, multiply. So uh, being able to adjust the scale, which means basically how the frequencies tip along the uh, keyboard. Uh, that's something that you do uh, with this RV9 and the uh, octave, octave trimmer. I usually adjust the synth uh, with octave, uh, the 8 foot octave uh, and as I said the RV9. Because you can only get so close with the keyboard controller adjustments. Uh, you need to do some final adjustment on the oscillator itself. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it about the oscillators. I, I put a, a precision trimmer here on, on oscillator number two as well, so I can. But as long as you set the first oscillator or one of the oscillators uh, so it's reliable then uh, you can just use that as a reference for the other oscillators. It's much easier uh, when you're done with the first one. But uh, it takes time and it takes a lot of swearing to get it right. But yeah. Um, okay, that's that for the oscillators I think. Cheerio! So, this next sound is a ring modulation sound. As you know, the amplifiers can be used as ring modulators. So right now I have the first three oscillators uh, being the sound source. And then I have the fourth oscillator coming out on mixer 3. And that goes into the ring mod, or actually the controller input on the amplifiers. That way uh, there are infinite types of uh, sounds you can get just by turning a knob a little bit. But something like this. Add a little reverb. just by having different relationships between the notes.
fun fun so I think that's it for this video very welcome next time cheerio